Good evening and welcome to the Ombudsman program. My name is Diane Wellborn and I'll be your host for this evening's program. Um, our topic this evening is quite current and timely um, because it is tax season and people are beginning to file. So tonight we're going to feature a, uh, a local initiative that actually has a national component to it as well, but it is our local earned income tax credit and child tax credit campaign. Tonight we're going to be able to give you information about where people can go to file for free, to receive free help in filing their taxes, how much the credits are going to be for various family sizes and incomes, and we can let people know the locations and how to get appointments and what they need to bring. Uh, this campaign brings a lot of money back into the Dayton and Montgomery County area in bringing the money back to families who all sorely need that. So let me begin by introducing my guests tonight, our local experts here. I have with me um, first Deborah Davenport, who works at Community Action Partnership. And Deborah, what is your title during this tax season? I'm the site coordinator for Community Action Partnership. Great, thank you very much, site coordinator. <laughs> and then we also have with us this evening Jeffrey Spruill. Welcome, Jeffrey. Thank you. Jeffrey is from the Internal Revenue Service. And what is your title in your work there? I am relationship manager and a tax consultant, and I'm the relationship manager to the Dayton Coalition. Wonderful. Well, we're going to come back and explain to our viewers exactly um, who is the coalition and how other people can get involved um, to try to help with this. But let's start by talking and letting our viewers know a little bit tonight about what are these tax credits? Where did they come from? How long have we had it? Jeff, maybe you're the best one to give us a little history about that. Okay, the earned income tax credit is for low-income working families, married families, head of household, and it was signed into law in 1975 by President Ford as an incentive for working people. And the child tax credit, the other credit, was signed into law by President uh, Clinton in 1997, and that's an additional amount of money uh, if you have children. And that's for children that are 17 years old or younger. Right, okay. And our campaign for the Earned Income Tax Credit and Child Tax Credit was really spearheaded by Commissioner Dean Lovelace originally. He should definitely be credited yes, with, with pulling everyone together and uh, kind of leading that campaign. Tell us a little bit about, about the origins of our local campaign, Deborah. Well, as you said, Commissioner Lovelace was the spearhead for this com campaign. Um, he felt like the people in the Montgomery County area weren't getting back all the credits that they were would do back. Mm -hmm. So he called in s some local banks, community organizations, and they started a coalition which was called the EITC CTC Coalition. And it started over 12 years ago and our first actual filing season started, I think we figured it back to 2002. Two. 2002. Our first, and when we first started, we only had three sites. Mm -hmm. And we have grown over the years up to, right now we have seven. We've had 10 before, but now we're down to seven. Okay, all right. Um, let's talk a little bit about who is eligible um, for the tax credits, and I'd like to ask the staff, please, if they could post the graphic that has uh, extra credit on the right on on the right hand side. If they could put that up on the screen so that viewers can see it while we are talking about it. That would be um, that would be very helpful. Jeff, I'll start with you on this one. Why don't you kind of go over? Looks a little complicated, but I'm sure you can break it down for us here. Okay. So. <laughs> you can get up to a maximum earned income tax credit of $3,169, and that's if you live with one children, or no, that's not the maximum, but that's if you have one child, you can get up to a maximum of $3,169, and if you earn less that's when you earn less than $36,920 uh, 
42,130 for married workers. So it starts out, uh, that's quite a bit of money, really. And, yes. the, and when you look at that as a refund, that can actually make a huge difference, you know, in a family. Uh, EITC up to $5,236. That's if you have two children that live with you and you earn less than 41952 or less than 40162 for married workers. So that's quite a bit of income too. And for this year, for 2012, and for the last couple of years, you can get EITC for up to three children, which is quite a bit, really. And when you look at $5,891, that can make a huge difference yes, in a family. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, you, if you're having to pay your mortgage or if you need to buy a, another car or any of those things, I mean, that is enough to really make a difference. Of course, we suggest too that if you can to save some of that money because you, if you don't have a home, you might be able to buy a home for the first time and that can make a huge difference. Yes, you know, in your life, and then you can get up. You can get up to four hundred seventy-five dollars if you have no children, and uh, a lot of people don't realize that. Uh, if you, for earned income tax credit, of course, it's less money. It's thirteen thousand nine hundred eighty dollars worth of uh, income there for a single worker, and nineteen thousand one ninety. But you can see how significant that is, particularly with families that have, you know, two to three children. I mean, that can make a huge difference in their lives. Right. These credits are really um, significant from three up to almost $6,000, depending upon your family size and your income. Now, what about the child tax credit? Okay, that's an additional amount of money, and uh, that's aside from the earned income tax credit. And what the, for each child that you have uh, living with you, you can get one, up to $1,000 additional credit. And like a credit is, if you owe $3,000 worth of taxes, that $1,000 is applied directly against your tax. And that's before withholding or anything else. So it's taken directly against that. Now, if for some reason you have less tax than the amount of the credits, there's a refundable portion of that. And uh, if you make as little as, you have to make at least $3,000 worth of earned income credit to get the additional amount of child tax credit and that can raise your refund quite a bit. So, I mean, this is significant. It is. It's a very significant amount of money um, for, for the families that, uh, that are, are filing for this. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the individuals who are going to be helping people file, uh, which is also the, the VITA program. But talk a little bit about its, its history and how long volunteers have been available and who's eligible to have their service, uh, the tax service done. Okay, well, the VITA program actually started in 1969. A lot of people don't realize that, but it has been around since 1969. Uh, all the volunteers are certified in tax law. They have to actually study the tax law and take an examination. They study IRS material. We provide the material and in many cases we provide the training as well. Uh, so, but Deborah has done a lot of the training herself so she can speak to that. Yes, please. Yes, our agency uh, for the past 10 years have been training in our or at our organization at 719 South Main Street. We do a week-long training and it's normally the first full week in January. But we recruit all year round. 
uh, we ask people that are interested, they can phone in to our agency, leave their name, we will get back. If I don't get back with them, we have another lady that will get back with them. And we have material there at the office that they can start reading and training on it before we actually get to the fouling season. That way when we get ready to do, for instance, 2013 uh, taxes, they will be ready to take that test to be certified. A lot of times people will wait till the last minute and then it's a rush and then they back out because they feel like it's too much to do in such a short time. But if you would come and get the material early in the year during the summertime when you're off or whatever, you can leisurely, you know, read the material. It's that way when we get ready to do our certification test, it's not such a rush on you. Yeah. That's great. And when you when they come and get the material, is the material a is it all written material that it's, people okay. read or is there some we, interactive? Okay, we do have written material and then we have tax wise online in which the individual can go online through the IRS.gov website and okay. it's called tax tax and um, we even have the booklet, a training manual to go along if you decide to go online to do your training or whatever. We have a booklet that goes along with the online training. That's great. We're going to come back and talk about this a little bit more, but we have a caller waiting. So I'd like to hear your question, please. Yes, uh, this, this is such an important show, uh, important for people in the Miami Valley, uh, a way for them to get uh, money back. Um, I have so many questions. I'm not sure they're all completely relevant to the topic tonight, but I'll, I'll just try two uh, question areas. Uh, first of all, in regard to the persons who are recruited to help uh, people as they file uh, to receive these uh, credits, uh, how do you guarantee the quality of uh, the people who are providing the help. Every year I try to do my own taxes. I do the best I can. Uh, maybe I would do better if I handed it over to a tax preparer, but um, I guess I'm uh, a, a, an anxious taxpayer and uh, a little bit uh, a leery of uh, placing uh, the results of my taxes into the hands of someone else. So. I wanted to hear a little bit about the quality of the training uh, of the volunteers. And my second question has to do with student loan interest. And this may not be directly relevant to your subject tonight, but um, I, for some years I was able to deduct student loan interest for loans that I took out to pay for my uh, children's education but that has not been possible for the last few years. And I, I don't understand whether there is a change in the tax code. Well, sorry for the long question. Thank you. Thank you for your question. We'll, we'll, we'll do our best to get it answered here. Although we can't give any direct personal tax advice <laughs> here over that, but I think we can deal with these. All right, his first question was about um, kind of the, the individuals that are helping people do the filing. And I guess it goes to the testing and the certification. And um, so, how do we how do we make sure they're they're all trained and that people can have faith in coming in and working with a okay. volunteer? Okay, like I, like we previously stated, we are trained in tax law, and we use a program that is furnished to us by the IRS, which is called TaxWise. And all the information that you bring in to us, once we program it into the system, we do not do the calculations. The program automatically does the calculations for us. So therefore, you don't have to worry about us manually calculating anything. It is calculated by the program. And 99% of that is always accurate. If we put in the right figures from the information you give us as a taxpayer, most of our, I would say, 99% of our returns are accurate. Oh, very good. That's a very high rate. That's good. But the other thing, too, we have levels of certification, which is important, mm -hmm. so that when you have a certain return, if you have certain things on it, 
Like if you have Schedule A, you have mm -hmm. itemized deductions, someone that is at a basic level cannot do your return. They have to be certified at what we call an intermediate level because there's certain things that on the tax law are very specific about itemized deductions in interest and dividends. And then you go up to an advanced level where there's even more uh, skill. Uh, you take capital gains and losses, you know, long-term capital gains. So that's one thing on to uh, your question about that is there are certification levels. You have to get 80% on the test. Okay. You have to get 80%. Also another thing too is you have to take an ethics course that you will be, you know, ethical behavior that, you know, there are no infractions that are done that would question ethics of the volunteer. I'm not saying that that would never happen, but we are very, very much aware of that and we want to make sure that everything is done properly and to the highest ethics standards. So that's what I would say besides the software does do all of those things, but you want to make sure that the people that are preparing your returns have knowledge, tax, and not that you're going to know all the tax law, but you have to have the knowledge to know where to find it. And at each site, you will have the proper materials. There is a resource guide, and there is a publication 17. So if you get something that is out of the regular realm, there is a resource to look that up. If that volunteer doesn't know what that is, if they're inexperienced, there's always a more seasoned volunteer. And there are a lot of volunteers uh, that I know of that can just say it right off the top of their head. Of course, I always look at it again, even though I <laughs> think I know Double it. Check. Double, Double check. Double check. Yeah. Yes. But the one thing we have to say, at our sites, we only do certain tax returns. We only will do low income and we do seniors. And we try to keep it at a level where it's basically intermediate. We do not do a lot of uh, people who have investments or anything like that. Now, we will do a Schedule A, but anything above that, we try not to get involved. And anyone who's self-employed, uh, we only get into small business, just a, just a self-employed thing but we don't get into business returns or we don't do capital gains or anything like that. We try to stay away from that because we're basically trying to gear our sites to the low income and to seniors. Great, that's good to clarify and that's good to know. Approximately how long would you say that it takes to read and examine the materials for the basic level certification. How many hours would you, I mean every person is different, we all yeah. read at different speeds, you know, but in general about how many hours once you give somebody the packet do you think they would need to spend to, um, uh, to, to pass like the Like you test? say, everybody has their yeah. own level of reading and yeah. um, the tests we take, it's basically, it is an open book test. But like Mr. Sproul had mentioned earlier, we have resource guides books that are right there with us. So like if we don't remember certain things, we can go to that quickly and find out. But like I say, when you do the basic and intermediate tests, and like I said, we do training, and we spend, it's like, I would say six to seven hours for three days, then we have like the one day, and then the next day they come in, they work with them on the test, they get online doing practice returns and everything. And so that's when you come into class. Now when you're doing it on your own, it's kind of hard to say because people will work on it one day, put it down, go back. But if you stick with it, I would say you can do it within two or three days okay. reading the material because the book covers everything up to um, in a, advance. And then we have where we do, uh, we don't do, uh, I want to say, servicemen. Okay. We don't do those returns. We do have military in the VITA program, and where you can get that done is at Wright Pat. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there are certain sites, too, not part of the coalition around the surrounding area where people are certified in military, but our main 
thrust in the in the coalition in Dayton is for the low income taxpayers and is it for the elderly because that is the purpose of the program. But I think it's like what Deborah said: it's at people's comfort level. The main thing is is you're not going to memorize this tax law. Uh, I don't know very many people. I haven't memorized it, but it's no feeling comfortable with using the material, finding out, finding where it is. And a lot of these, a lot of times you have a taxpayer where you have a situation that is pretty much the same and you learn by doing it. I think that's the most important thing I'd say is you learn to do it. And, uh, and some of them are kind of tricky. So we do not expect anyone to memorize tax law just to know how to use the resource guides and find the answer. I think that's the most important thing. And, and it gets a lot easier the more you do it. The first time you prepare a return uh, as a volunteer, it can be a little frightening, but there are people there to assist you. Mm -hmm. But once you've done a couple of them, then you gain your confidence. And you get a good feeling, particularly if you get a taxpayer, that actually you can see it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And there, a lot of them will thank you. You know, they say, well, you've really done something that has changed my life. I mean, it doesn't always happen, but I've seen it happen where someone actually cried. Mm -hmm. She was a widow and she cried and she says, I didn't know I was going to pay these bills and thank you for your help. And there is just nothing that is, gives you more satisfaction than helping someone like that. Right. Thank well, you for sharing that story. That's very issue. good. Hmm? You want to address the other issue about um, yeah, we, we'll come with, okay. to the student loan. Yeah, our, our caller had the second question okay. about, well, the student loans were, were uh, being deducted at one point and now they're not. Of course, they are. You can still deduct interest, but then that depends on your income. Okay. That's where, so I don't know what your income limit is, but the, at a certain income level below that, you can still deduct student interest, but of course, it's like anything else. If you make too much money, then mm -hmm. a lot of those mm -hmm. <laughs> deductions are not within your reach. Okay. All right. So that's it. That's the that's the limit there. It is still deductible, though. There hasn't yes. been a yes. change. There has not been a tax okay. law change. Okay. That's that's very good to get out. Now back to your training again. Just want to mm -hmm. make sure people understand. Uh, we've made the the you've made the good point that you don't <laughs> expect people to memorize tax law. We want to encourage people to come and volunteer with this program, and that's why I wanted to be pretty specific about what the training involves. So basically, when you have your classes to train people in early January, they are what two two six hour days and then some practice um, days before the like test. It's like Monday through Wednesday. Then Thursday, you get like a day off where you can work on your tests and do some practicing, and then you come back in on the Friday. Then we cover the state of Ohio law, and you can work on your tests. We have the computers there. Everything is done on a computer, and when they, the first day, like you said, we go over ethics, what is expected of a volunteer. Uh, then they go over the different tax laws, and like I said, we have a resource guide and they show you where, if people ask you questions, where you can go to the resource guide. But if you know who can file and, you know, you have who's head of household, a lot of people want to come in and tell you, well, I'm a head of household. Well, if you're the only person living in that house, you can't file head of household. You do have to have some dependents living within the house with you. But you have to be able to determine and help these people, you know, where they can't come in and tell you. You will have to know that, and a lot of them will question you. So like I said, we have the resource guide. If they question you, they don't believe you, we have that resource guide where we can go to that particular area and show them the tax law saying that you cannot or you can. And like I said, it's nice to have, and we, we are expected to have that. We have our Pub 17s, we have our resource guide, because all of this stuff, after a number of years doing it, you sort of remember it, but the first couple of years in doing a tax return, you're not going to remember all those tax laws. So, but I love the program we have because, like I said, once we plug that information in on those lines of the 1040, 
everything gets calculated for you. Even if you are entitled to earned income tax credit, it will go to that page and figure that out for you. There are certain questions we answer, but the system will figure that out for you. If you're entitled to child tax credit or dependent care, where you pay for someone to keep your child, well, we put that information in and it calculates it up for you. So that's one thing I really love about the program because all the calculations are done for us. That way we know they're accurate. Right. We just have to make sure we put in all the information correctly that we that is given to us. Okay. Well, we're going to get uh, get to what people need to bring okay. in just a minute. But before we leave we leave this subject, I just wanted to ask: the Vita program and our earned income tax credit campaign are going together here very much. But uh, but are there are there people that are eligible uh, to come and have the the free tax assistance, even if they're not eligible for earned in income? tax credit? Oh yes. Okay. Oh, yes. So we want to make that clear that even even people that may not be eligible, maybe over income for some of these programs may still be eligible for the for the free service. Right. Okay. We, we try to limit it to an individual if you're just a simple return, mm -hmm. one W two or maybe two, three, just a simple return and you're so you may maybe fifty thousand dollars. We will go ahead and do that for you. Okay. But we try to limit it to no more than fifty. That's good. That's good to get out there. All right. If I could ask, um, if I could ask the um, uh, for the next graphic, please. We'd like to see the graphic entitled "2013 Free Vita Tax informa Site Information." So we're going to talk about where people in Montgomery County and Dayton can go to find that assistance. You see it in front of you, but Deborah, why don't you walk us through this? Okay. First one listed is a Community Action Partnership, and that's at 719 South Main Street. Um, we do appointments only there, and that number for appointment is 341-5000, and the extension is 161, and that is wheelchair accessible. Um, we have another, Community Action Partnership has another office which is in our Youth Empowerment Center out in Trotwood, and that's located at 716 East Main Street, and you call that same number, 341-5000, um, for an appointment, extension 161, and that's also wheelchair accessible. Then we have the Dayton Christian Center, which is located at 1352 West Riverview Avenue, and their number is 275-7174, but I do believe the help link number schedules appointments for that location, and that main number is 913-2000. And then we have the Greater Dayton Rec Center, which is located, that's the Roosevelt Center. For some people that don't know it as the, the Greater Dayton Rec Center, that's the new Roosevelt Center on 20, <laughs> 21 West 3rd Street. And then we have the Job Center, which is at 1111 East Edwin C. Moses Boulevard. And that number you call is that information and referral number, which is 913-2000. And we have the Life Enrichment Center, which is located in East Dayton on 425 North Finley, and their number is 252-5700. And then we have our Wesley Center, which is located at 3730 Delphi Zoo and their number is 263-3556. And all of our sites, except for the Job Center, we do appointments only. Job Center does do walk-ins. Okay. That's about the only site that I know that does walk-ins. Okay, and uh, when a person is making an appointment, about how long is their appointment going to be? How, how do you schedule them? Um, we schedule them every 30 minutes. The average return takes you about 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes, you know, if it's just, like I said, if you just have one W-2 simple return, you can get it done in maybe 10 to 15 minutes. And then we have the reviewer now that who goes over. Once the preparer has done your tax 
return then we have a person that will go over the tax return with you to make sure everything was then put into the system correctly and the whole process will probably take about thirty minutes sometimes maybe forty minutes depending on how much information we have to input for you ok very good and i'd like them to ask what are the 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 benefits from your point of view for people to come into one of these sites rather than visiting a another type of tax preparation okay. service the benefit to our program is we do not charge it's a free service um, you have other places they say you can come and we'll do a free tax return for you but that's maybe just the 1040 you know and they will only do your federal but there's a charge maybe for the state but we do federal and state and it is a free service okay very good Jeff you want to comment on that yes and they're all certified volunteers okay. <laughs> and you get a paper copy of the return that has been prepared for you okay you get a paper copy of that and I have a um, I, I want to you know a lot of people want to say do you keep our information on file there at this we do not keep anyone's information at the end of the fouling season everything is in a computer we keep no records on our side of anyone's information and it goes into the computer and after so many months it's taken off and then it's reloaded for the next fouling season but if you come in maybe three months after you got your return done we may not be able to give you another copy that's the reason why we give you a copy of your return and we put it in an envelope and we ask you to bring that back with you when you come to get your return, you know, return done the next year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, then if a person does lose that, how, what process would they use to go back and get that? They would have to contact the government, the They IRS. would go to the IRS. And you get a transcript. And you get a transcript right, yes. of your return because, you know, we do lose things. So, yes. and, and we, we but <laughs> I do want to add that if you have, we have an online version which the Dayton Coalition uses, which means it's not software. So, usually when we prepare someone's return, the prior year comes up. That's the only time that you can get the prior year return. Okay. But yes, you learn. Put that in a safe place, all your right. return, and save it. All right, good. We have another caller. So, all right, we'd like to hear your question, please. Go ahead. Well, maybe they yeah, will call. This is such a great service that you've created. It's just remarkable. And I'm wondering how unique is this to date? Uh, I have friends over in Columbus. Uh, people I know in churches uh, who could really use this. Is, is, are there similar uh, programs and services uh, in Columbus or Toledo, or is this just uh, here in Dayton? Thank, Thank you. you. We'll, we'll get your answer to that. Thank you for your call. Uh, yes, there are. Uh, across the country, there are, are coalitions. Columbus has a coalition, a tax coalition. Toledo has a tax mm -hmm. coalition. Cleveland has one. But I think that with Dayton is, is that because of Dean Lovelace, the word gets out about the coalition. He's very, he's been very active in the coalition. I think that has helped the coalition to get the word out. And but there are coalitions. Uh, you can go on to the IRS.gov and type in, in the search VITA. And, and you, there's actually a uh, search engine in there where you can put your address in there and, and find the nearest tax sites, free tax sites near you. Now that's good for people to know. We've given them here, mm -hmm. but it's good to know yes. there's another way right on the IRS website. We've talked a lot about the coalition. We've kind of mentioned it. I think maybe let's take some time now and get specific and say who is on this coalition? Who is behind this movement? I don't want to start naming banks okay. or anything, but we do have a lot of local banks and credit unions, because if I start naming one, I might leave one out. Okay. So <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, there's banks, 
and we have credit unions, and we have our, just like the places where I named where we do the tax returns mm -hmm. at, they <coughs> are part of our coalition. Mm -hmm. And we're always looking for more s pro uh, people who have sites in which we can come and do tax, uh, or do our tax programs there, because a lot of places we've looked into, they just don't have the capacity for to provide for volunteers to come in there. So that's the reason our sites have been limited, because we do not have spaces for our volunteers to go. But even though we don't have spaces, we can still use volunteers, because we are using volunteers. We don't want to burn them out. Mm -hmm. And the more volunteers we have, that means the less they would have to work. Mm -hmm. And see, because like, for instance, downtown at our Main Street office, we're open Monday through Thursday from 9 to 3.30. So if we only got three volunteers, that means they're working, you know, every day back to back, you know. So the more volunteers you have, <coughs> the less work you have to do. And we're always, like I said, we're always looking for volunteers, and we have approximately, so far this year, I would say about 50 volunteers scattered over the city at the different sites. Now, this past Saturday, we had a big Super Saturday at the Job Center, which we used some of the people who work for that bank. They volunteer to do taxes there. And this coming Saturday, we will have a program and so, like I said, we can always use volunteers. Okay. And even now, at this now, time in the tax season, it's never they can too still late. Because, oh. like I said, we'll be doing taxes up to April 15th. Yes. And this is just the beginning of February. All right. So, if people want to volunteer, do they call your. They call the 341 5000. Okay. To get them started, to get their packet, and right. to start and reading. There and is an individual there, and. Um, if you just call and say you want to be trained in the VITA program, our operator will direct you to the right person. Or I can give you her extension. It's 138, and that will take you to, her name is Allison Lott, and she's the one who does the scheduling, plus she's the one who takes in all information of anyone who's interested in becoming a volunteer. Okay, and if um, if the person is just too busy now and knows they can't do it for this season, they can still call any time and, uh, and go ahead and, and get started on the packet to be ready for next year. Yes, they can. Okay, very, very good. Um, I'd like to ask um, uh, staff if they could put the graphic up about what information I must bring with me to the tax preparation site so that we can review, uh, you know, you want to make that appointment, that 30-minute appointment, the most productive <laughs> time that you can and to have everything organized and, and bring it in with you. So let's talk a little bit about what should a person bring. Which one of you wants to start with this? Um, I can go. Okay. First of all, they do have to bring a photo ID. The, the filer has to bring a photo ID. And they need to bring in all of their wage statements, W-2s, 1099s, or whatever. And please wait till you get all of your W-2s and 1099s because we have people rushing in and trying to get their taxes done early, and then they come back later saying, I forgot one. So make sure you have all of your wages. Then do you have to do an amended you return? You have to do an amendment. So you pretty much have to do it all over again to yes. get that. Yes, okay. and we actually if you got, wherever you got your taxes prepared at, whichever site you got your, if you have to do an amendment, you should go back to that site to get your amendment done because they will have your previous information on, on file. For this season For this season, only. right. For that. this okay. season only. All right. uh, you need to bring in Social Security cards for any individual that you will be claiming on your tax return. Um, some people don't have Social Security numbers. They might have an ITN number. That's a number that is given out to them so that they can work in this. You know, we have uh, people who are not legally citizens, legal citizens here in the United States, but they are working here. So they give them ITN numbers, and that's like their Social Security number. So they need to bring those in. Um, 
If you pay for child care expenses during the year, if you had to pay a babysitter or if you paid um, some licensed provider, then you bring in that information. And on that information, it should have either a Social Security number or an employee identification number and their address and all of that. Uh, any correspondence that you receive, a lot of people receive letters from the IRS for the previous year, 2012 or 2000, and they don't know what that letter means, correspondence. I've had a lot of them to come in to me and want me to explain why they receive certain correspondence from the IRS. Um, and if you want your refund direct deposit, you need to bring in with you the routing number and the account number, whether it's a checking or a savings account. You do need to bring that. A lot of them forget and come in, I want direct deposit, but they don't have that information. If you're married, uh, we ask for both individuals to come in together because they have to sign. So we need, if you're married filing jointly, you need to come in together. And a lot of the credits we were talking about earlier, if you're married filing separately, you don't, and you have children, you don't qualify for okay. the earned income tax credit and certain credits. So uh, if you're not sure, come in or call and we can explain it to you. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. If a person is having a challenge getting any of these pieces of things that they might need, what do you think is their best recourse? They're trying to get it all ready to bring it to you, but a W-2 is missing, they didn't get it, or something happened. Well, you can call the employer and let them know you didn't receive your W-2 and you need a copy of that. A lot of people can download the W-2s now. So call your previous employer if you're still working for them and they haven't given you your W-2 yet, you need to call them and ask what happened to them. Um, a lot of times people will come in and they have lost their Social Security cards. You can go to the Social Security office and get a printout. And we do encourage people to bring their previous year tax return because a lot of that information is on the previous year tax return. And that's considered a legal document. So if it was accepted by the IRS the previous year, then if you bring that return in and you just so misplace one of the Social Security cards, that information will be on that document and we can use that document. So we encourage them to bring in the previous year's tax return because there's a lot of things we look at because some people question the fact, I got more last year than I got this year. So we can go over that with them and possibly explain the reason why they got less this year than they got last year. Okay, so it's good to keep that definitely and, and, and bring that in for you. you uh, you've mentioned that uh, you're going to use about 50 volunteers in our campaign um, that this year. Where do most of these volunteers come from? All over. And we, I can tell you too, the University of Dayton students, we get a lot of volunteers from them and they work mostly at the job center. Okay. And this is uh, we've used those students for a number of years. We get quite a few volunteers that come over. Okay, good. Well, let's talk a little bit then uh, about the benefits to our community that come from the earned income uh, tax credit. Let, let's talk numbers. How much, how, how many people have been filing through your sites and how much money has been coming back in, into Dayton? Jeff, you want to? Well, through the Dayton Coalition itself, about 3,000 uh, accepted returns. There has been over $4 million worth of refunds, of which $1.6 million has been earned income tax credit, which is quite a bit. Uh, you know, I mean, a lot. There's actually a lot more potential uh, in that. It's, it's just getting the word out that these sites are here to help low-income taxpayers, to help the elderly, and it's mainly just the knowledge of, of that it's available, that you do not have to pay anything for them. 
And do you think that we um, that uh, are getting closer to that potential is getting people to come in and file through through the via mm -hmm. the via the sites, right? That people are just not accessing some of the benefits that they could because they're out there doing it on their own? Is that part of what's happening? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's more that they're going to pay preparers okay. and they're paying the fees. And when they're paying the fees, many people, I think not everyone, but a lot of people feel that this is just newfound money. But you're actually entitled to this. This is your money. So when you pay $300 or whatever, to get a tax return prepared and you are having a hard time making ends meet, you could put that additional $300 back in your pocket by going to one of these sites. That can make a lot of difference, especially when we're talking about earned income tax credits of $3,400, $5,800. That's aside from the withholding or anything else. That's just earned income tax credit. That is a lot of money just to leave on the table or to pay a fee on when you can keep all of it yourself. Very good point. Have we seen the numbers of people coming uh, into the sites to file increasing and therefore the money that's come back into our community increasing over the years? You mean the number of people mm -hmm. that we see? It yeah. didn't, we get more and more each year, and okay. I think um, we're getting to the point, like I said, we need the volunteers because we're getting more and more people to come in. And right now, I think we are booked up at our site up until the end of February, almost into March. We are we're booked up until March. Okay. So um, we try to do as many as we can. And like I said, I don't want to burn our volunteers out, but we're working, you know, we try to do as many as we can. And we have sometimes had people that walk in, and if we have some person that maybe canceled, didn't show up, we try to work you in. But we really do push that you do make, make an, an appointment. appointment. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes, as you mentioned, the job center is the only place that you can walk in. Right. All the other sites. Prepare, uh, prefer an appointment right. so they can can manage um, helping people. Yes. I do want to bring some other statistics. This is total overall, you know, not part of VITA, but there were 48,000 returns in Montgomery County processed through the IRS for EITC. That's a lot of returns. Uh, more than 130 million dollars in federal funds that were returned to Montgomery County taxpayers. Uh, that's a lot of money and, and a lot of this is done by paid preparers. I'm not trying to slam paid preparers or anything, but if you take double what I quoted as the 1.6 million in EITC, uh, if double the people that are entitled to that had that money and they didn't have to pay any fees, could you imagine what a difference it would make? It would make a <laughs> lot of difference in the yes. community. It would have a lot, of, a lot of people having more money back in their pockets or bank mm -hmm. accounts or paying their bills with it or, you know, whatever, uh, any of those options. Yes, that, that would make a huge, a huge difference. Um, are there any particular stories you all would like to share? Uh, you know, no names, of course, but <laughs> you mentioned the one widow who was so, so shocked she was brought to tears by what her return. Every year it, it's something different. I mean, some come in, they already have an idea of maybe what they're going to get back, and then some come in thinking they're going to owe and when you tell them they're getting a refund back, they're very elated. And I'm working on a return right now, which we can't file. That's another thing, the 8863, which is the form you fill out for educational credits. We won't be able to file that until February 14th, Valentine's mm -hmm. Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so therefore, th um, that's why I said it's a return in progress. Mm -hmm. And the individual, um, they were so afraid that they weren't going to get any, well, they knew they owed because they got a letter and they were saying that they owed. 
So they were saying, oh, we're not going to get anything back. So I did the return, and I completed and everything, and I said, well, the good news is that, no, the bad news is I can't file it now. And they said, why? And I said, well, we can't file that form yet. And then I said, but the good news is you're getting a return back on your, uh, you're getting some money back. I thought he was going to faint. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm because glad he didn't. <laughs> but, uh, he was so happy because he was so nervous and scared because, you know, they needed the money, but they were going to have to pay that money back. But then to, to know that they were able to cover what they owed and then still get some money back, it was just really exciting. And I like to do when people are getting something back and they sit there and they're so excited. That's what makes our job worthwhile. And that's where the rewards are yes. for the volunteers that come in and, and, and learn. Go ahead. And I, all of our volunteers, the ones we have now, you know, it's hard to get volunteers and recruit volunteers, but once they start, they, they enjoy it. They come back from year to year. The only ones we lose are maybe someone that move out of town or something like that. But the ones that we do get, we are able to retain them. So because, like I said, it's hard to get them, but once we rope them in, <laughs> we, we, can, we can keep them. That's, that's great. So let's make the point again that it's not too late to volunteer no, it's not for too this late. year. And it's not too late to make plans to for, do it for, for next, next year. year. This makes a significant difference in the lives of, of many, many people in, the, in our communities. How many returns did you say you filed last year? Uh, last year we filed almost, it was close to 3,000 3, total for the whole coalition the, the whole coalition yes did. our agency we we did close to 500 total with both sites okay all right and we want to encourage people to go ahead and call and make those appointments mm -hmm. because as you say yes. the, it is getting booked up yes. but uh, so you want to to have them hurry up and do that we have only a few minutes left remaining. Uh, we want to encourage our viewers to make an appointment, call those numbers. Uh, if, they, if you didn't get it down from the program, you can call 913-2000 to uh, get an appointment or get redirected to any of those sites. Um, so it's time to make an appointment. It's time to get your paperwork together and bring it down. And it's, they're in need of volunteers. If there's yes. anyone watching this program who thinks they could give some time to make a really big difference for families and individuals and for our community as a whole because yes. all of this money that comes back benefits uh, all of us. Are there any closing remarks you all would like to make? Jeff, you want to go first? Yes, I want to thank you for the opportunity to spread the word about earned income tax credit and I want to thank the many volunteers mm -hmm. that participate in this program that make it actually happen, mm -hmm. that, that make it work and succeed and uh, you know there's it's refreshing to find people that have that kind of spirit and dedication you know it brings new life and mm -hmm. hope into things and I and I want to just thank the community of, of Dayton for embracing this program and I want to thank Commissioner Lovelace yes. because without Commissioner Lovelace with his hard work and with his really really putting this program in the forefront it wouldn't work and that's and having not just us you know the community uh, community action which is a vital part of it uh, the IRS the city of Dayton all of us working together are able to make this program a success okay. and I want to thank you again for well, this opportunity it has been my pleasure and I hope that viewers tonight mm -hmm. will find their way uh, to these sites yes. and that volunteers <laughs> will also Deborah would you do you have any closing comments uh, just the fact that I've been working with the program since it started 12 years and I had retired <laughs> but I got roped back into it and I didn't really get roped because I had made a commitment and I said I would still come and help out and volunteer so I'm doing that and I probably will do it until 
my health fails. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> well, thanks to you both for your, for your part uh, on, on the coalition and to all the members of the coalition, mm -hmm. the agencies, the banks, the government representatives, and, mm -hmm. uh, and all of the volunteers for, yes. um, for pulling all of this together. It's a real, and I thank you two for coming during this very busy season for both of you. So <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you to the viewers for watching tonight. If you need follow-up mm -hmm. on any of this, we've given the number 913-2000, or one can always contact our ombudsman office at 223-4613, and we'll have all of this in our office, and we can help you find the right place. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.